Today we're going to be talking about radioactive decay. So if you haven't checked out our video about atoms, make sure and check that one out. But basically, we're going to talk about radioactive decay. So that's a nucleus and part of the nucleus is going to leave the nucleus and the atom is going to change. So we're going to talk about the different options that potentially can happen in radioactive decay. So again, like we talked about in the nucleus, we have protons and we have neutrons. So I've drawn a plus for our protons and an N for our neutrons here. And then you have an electron cloud that's going around that nucleus, but this is the nucleus that's being held together tightly. And when we have radioactive decay, we're going to have something leaving that nucleus. So the different options that we have for radioactive decay, we're going to go through them here. But first we're going to talk about the terminology and the notation we use. So we have a given element. We have a given element we call X, then that element has a given number of protons, we call that the atomic number, and then it has the atomic mass. And the atomic mass is the same thing as the number of neutrons plus the number of protons. And again, the atomic number is the number of protons. So when we talk about changes that are gonna happen, to this nucleus, we're going to be talking about starting with one given configuration. So for instance, if we start with this, and then the first thing we're going to talk about is alpha decay. So alpha and an alpha particle is actually just the same thing as a helium nucleus. We often will just refer to it by the Greek symbol, but the idea is that we have a helium nucleus which is going to leave our nucleus. So a helium nucleus is two protons and two neutrons. So you can think about we have two protons and two neutrons and they're leaving the nucleus. When these leave the nucleus, we have what's called an alpha decay. So this alpha particle is leaving the nucleus. Afterwards, you can see if we started with Z number of protons, you can see we're going to have Z minus two because two protons left. And then we started with Z plus N for the atomic mass. And then we're going to have Z plus N minus 4 because we lost two protons and two neutrons. So our new element we're going to call X prime. It's going to be the element that corresponds to two less protons and an atomic mass which is four atomic units less. So this is what's going to happen for an alpha decay. Then the next type of decay we want to talk about is called beta decay. So again, that's a Greek symbol again. And there's actually two types of beta particles, and they're actually antiparticles. So you have the electron, which we also call beta minus. That's the same as an electron. And then we have beta plus, which is also called a positron. So beta plus is what we have in positron emission tomography. That's the decay that starts that reaction that essentially you have your positrons decaying and that's what you're making an image of in positron emission tomography. The process is a little more complicated because those positrons actually 
annihilate with the electrons and generate photons. Those photons are what are actually measured. But we want to talk about right now for a beta minus decay, how is that going to look in terms of the change to our nucleus? So for a beta minus, again, if we have Z plus N here, and then we have Z, and we are losing an electron within the nucleus, that electron is actually coming from a neutron. So you can think of it that the neutron is getting converted to a proton. So if we have the beta minus decay, we're going to have one more proton. So the atomic number is going to increase by one and the atomic mass is going to stay the same. So this essentially means a neutron is converted to a proton in that scenario. Then in the scenario of positron emission, again, if we start with Z protons and then Z plus N for the atomic mass, and then we have a positron that's going to be emitted. Again, this time the proton is now going to be converted to a neutron so we will have Z minus one, but the atomic number is still staying the same. So that's what's gonna happen. There's obviously more sophisticated discussion that you could have as far as the, the underlying physics behind this, but at a high level, what's going on is we're converting from protons to neutrons and from neutrons to protons in beta decays. And then those, those electrons or those positrons, they are going to interact relatively locally. Then the final decay that we're gonna talk about is actually called gamma decay. So again, another Greek symbol. And the idea is that first, what's gonna happen for a gamma decay, first you're going to have either an alpha or a beta decay. Then this puts the nucleus into an unstable state. So if you have a stable nucleus, and then you can see you're going to be leaving that stable configuration. So after, either that alpha decay or the beta decay, then you're going to have the gamma decay, wherein that unstable nucleus is going to emit electromagnetic radiation called a gamma ray, and that brings more stability. And this type of decay scenario is what's used in SPECT imaging. So it's called single photon emission computed tomography. And in SPECT imaging, the idea is that there's unstable nuclei. Those unstable nuclei will decay. And those gammas are what are going to be measured 